Yes. So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you have seen regularly on Saturday at 11 o'clock, uh, we have keep coming with different, different subject. And uh, today's subject is Central Electricity Authority's Regulation 2023, measures relating to safety and electric supply. Uh, today, 24th June, 2020 at 11 a.m., we are conducting the first series of CA regulation 2023. If we have seen tremendous response uh, for this uh, webinar, we have over 1,500 plus participants for this program. So we are contemplating to have three or four more series on the same subject. As you all know, we can't do definitely one one and a half hours. We can't justify talking about these regulations. So with the respective uh, you know, delegates today, we may have rolled a few more uh, you know, series on the subject. So this is hosted by National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety, NFE, which is just four months old. And uh, we have touched upon over you know, maybe uh, seven to 10,000 uh, people across the country. Uh, through physical uh, webinar, then uh, physical seminar, webinars. And we, I'm also very proud to say we have over 500 members, very active members. We also have a very active WhatsApp group uh, clarifying and addressing various issues. Uh, so we did uh, our conferences uh, across the country talking about uh, National Electrical Code uh, 2023, uh, we've finished five major cities. So we have upcoming event in Cochin. Mumbai, we have a network meeting. Uh, Pune, Kolkata, Gurugaon, and Coimbatore. So those who don't know what is NFE, the, uh, you know, we have uh, vision and mission put forth here. And you can always log into our website, nfees.org. However, our president who is here as a, a presenter, we'll be talking a bit more on the um, NFE. And also, this is our website, nfes.org, become a member. And we are also coming out with uh, another uh, webinar on uh, uh, 1st July. That's about Earth and Unearth Systems. So we already have 500 plus registration. Those who wish to join, uh, Lakshmi, my colleague, will be putting it on the chat box so you can take it on. We have uh, 15 July, we are coming with a second series of lightning protection on structures. Okay, my name is Dominic. Uh, I keep posting here uh, from the fire industry involved now with electrical standards and code. And today we have a very distinguished uh, guest. I will not read out the entire profile. Everybody is quite familiar with Mr. Gopakumar, the president of NFE. We have our uh, uh, general secretary who is expected to join any moment, Mr. Apavu, who is also the retired electrical inspectorate from Tamil Nadu. So we have Mr. James Kutti Thomas, uh, uh, is also a retired electrical inspectorate uh, from Kerala. So he he's joined us as a panelist and he will be taking up certain questions from you. So we have um, uh, Shashiraj KB uh, from Bangalore. Retired additional chief electrical inspectorate is also with us. We are blessed to have him today. I think uh, we'll have very good interaction with him. So we have Eamon Sali, the founder, a member of uh, NFE, and also uh, retired PWD inspected wing, and uh, he's been quite active uh, with the uh, Maharashtra government. So very knowledgeable person. We we'll, let's see how we can come together and participate. So without much delay, we have a fantastic participant now. It's 11.05. I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Gopakumar to take over from here. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic. Uh, so today, uh, you know, it's a very important day. So far, our programs, we were discussing some technical subjects. Today is the Actually, the second time we are talking about uh, regulation, uh, one year back we had a panel discussion where uh, 
the same panelists uh, were there except Shashiraj sir. Uh, so today, uh, after the, the, the discussion is, uh, you know, it was before the regulation or we conducted it just after the draft publication. So now this time it's after the regular uh, uh, regulation. I will just show a small presentation. I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, normally pe people ask uh, this question, what is the regulatory framework? So this uh, slide, this was actually, we got it from uh, uh, the uh, one of the CEA person during our program in Bombay, he was presenting this. So then we took this idea and made this slide. On the regulatory uh, uh, framework, if we look uh, the, at the top of the regulation, we have the Act, which is the Electricity Act, uh, based on which uh, the regulations are made. So the regulations talk uh, about safety, especially the CEA safety regulation, which we call the full name of the regulation is Measures Relating to Safety and Electric Supply 2023. So earlier there was uh, IE Rule 1956, which was repel, repealed uh, during 2010 with uh, CEA safety regulations or measures relating to safety and electric supply regulations 2010, which was some informations were added during 2015, 2018, and 2019. Now in 2023 regulation, uh, the uh, 2010 version and all the other informations are merged together. So because of this merger, the regulation numbers had uh, changed, which is also going to have some kind of issues uh, uh, with respect to people, those who are following the old regulation number, sometime, you know, that you have to change to the new regulation number uh, for the same subject. Now, uh, June 8th, uh, CEA has uh, gazetted the measures relating to safety and electric supply regulations 2023. And these regulations uh, explains how to follow the requirements of the uh, Electricity Act. Uh, now we will go through the questions. So there are some questions which we prepared for that. Uh, when I when we ask the question, we will also share the uh, the, the regulation on the screen so that uh, it is easy for the viewers to understand. Uh, Apav sir, are you available? Hello. Yes, I one second. One second. Yes, sir. Gopal, sir. Hello? Yes. 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 Uh, sir, uh, the, the, the first question is uh, to you. Uh, the first question is to you. Uh, the first question is, uh, you have to explain a little bit about uh, the uh, the regulatory framework which we follow or which we are supposed to follow uh, in India, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I am in my narrative. There could be some... Uh, uh, data issues or uh, network issues. Please pardon if you do not hear me, just uh, ring me. Eh? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm coming over through my mobile only. Uh, regarding your question, sir, that regulatory framework, uh, actually, uh, the hierarchy you have already explained, it has been widely circulated among our members. Anyhow, for the new viewers, I can say that uh, 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 ultimately the constitutional uh, Ensurement to that citizen, that is Article 21, empowers uh, are the citizen has a right to live under Article 21. This is strengthened by the uh, uh, directive principle of the state uh, through Article 41 and 42, based on which only several act and regulations are coming into picture. Uh, in that uh, in that era, the Electricity Act uh, 2003 is insisting safety to the people under regulation. The CEA has been formed accordingly. So CEA is empowered under regulation 53 to coordinate with the state governments in framing regulation for the for enforcing safety to the general public at large. Accordingly, the regulations have been prescribed. Uh, uh, previously, it was the electricity rules, 1937 and 1956. Now, now that uh, 2010, uh, CEA regulation 2010 has replaced all those things. Now we have come up with the 
new regulation 2023 that is measures relating to uh, safety in uh, electrical safety. So with this new introduction, we have uh, covered most of the uh, ambiguities and vague uh, ideas which were prevailing the s standards and uh, regulations. Now that uh, uh, there could be some uh, some scope of interpretation against us that I hope in this session we can resolve those issues or we can address something uh, that can be done to the society at large and the implementers at large. Thank you, Mr. Gopal. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, uh, as the panelist, uh, my first question uh, is to Mr. Uh, Amritilal. Uh, Mr. Amritilal, I, on the screen, I'm showing the regulation. Yeah. I'm sure you, you and all of us yeah. already must have read uh, most of the regulations. Now, one of the confusing subjects all over India was uh, earthing. And definitions sometimes were not good. And now, in the regulations, for example, you can see bonding conductor. There is a, a new definition and, uh, for example, earthing, there is a new confu uh, new regulation. Earthing means connection of exposed conductive parts and extraneous conductive part to the earthing terminal. Uh, so all these uh, has come. What is your opinion about these uh, new uh, definitions? Uh, yeah, good morning to all. Uh, the definition is good. The only problem is what I find is in uh, regulation, the term uh, like uh, duplicate connection, uh, distinct and duplicate connection is required. Like that, it is getting repeated everywhere. Now, the problem, what usually uh, the installers will have, whether it is talking about uh, separate, uh, uh, new, I mean, earth bus bar or equipotential bonding. So that type of confusion is there throughout the regulation. So I would like, uh, I mean, if there is anybody from regulatory body, they can explain it, what they actually mean by that. Yeah, OK, thank you. So basically, uh, there are some advantage. And uh, in, in between, there is some, uh, you know, still the confusion is there. Kumar, can I, can I, can I just? Uh... Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. See, when they say the two distinct connections, it should not be taken as two different earth terminals. It should be taken as two different paths through which the uh, earth connection shall be given. So if one of the uh, earth wire breaks, one of the protein conductor breaks, at least it should have another path to reach to the earth. So in that way, it should be interpreted. Yeah, I, actually, it is talking about two connections. Now the requirement of two connections, connections is started. Different protective yes. conductors which are taking you to the uh, earth, earth terminal earth yeah. uh, actually sir they, this has got uh, some technical uh, background as well for example uh, once when these two connections were introduced during maybe 1950s there was no ip ingress protection was not existing and most of the equipment the earth connections were on the mm -hmm. outer casing of the equipment let's say for example a motor but later, once when the ingress protection was in, introduced in the standards, uh, the earth terminals were uh, people started keeping it inside a protected, you know, mechanically protected place, which is either inside the panel board or something like that. But uh, this practice is not uh, popular in India. We still have panel boards where the earth terminals are or the earth bus bar is extended outside. So if the connections are from outside, of course, mechanically it can get corroded or somebody disconnecting, and those chances are there. So Two connections are required. Now there is another technical uh, reason. For example, in the if you look at IS732, uh, I think class 5.1.6 or so, it is uh, it is there is a requirement of uh, limiting the leakage current in an electrical equipment appliance. The maximum leakage current in a fixed installation of uh, more than a current using equipment more than 32 amps, the maximum allowed leakage current is 10 milliampere. If the leakage current is more than 10 milliampere, we are supposed to make a reinforced protective measure. And one of the reinforced protective measure is to have two connections. So basically, technically, these two connections are required. You, you can even see it in the IS732. You just uh, search reinforced protective measure, then you will be able to get it. So basically, this is uh, a requirement. So I hope, uh, Mr. Amrit, this is clear. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, why, uh, sir, yeah. sir, uh, sir, Mr. Gopal, sir. Yes, please. Hello. Ah, uh, I think uh, Amrit Ali is not convinced on this, <laughs> so I can uh, supplement some more things. Uh, in the okay. near session, uh, most of the things have been resolved. They say what they say under the heading of everything up to not exceeding 60 volt, etc. What they mean is two separate and distinct connections with the earthing system. Uh, previously, people misconstrued that it is, should be there should be some uh, air cell road in the switch board at one end and another air cell road that lift and something going on. So now that uh, it is clearly different as earthing system, uh, we can what we can infer is it is only a redundancy. We do not give much of weightage to the two separate and distinct categorization because it has been uh, giving a new look in the new regulation. That's what I think. So I just put that uh, part uh, the, in the in the chat box. You can see the definition of earthing arrangement or earthing system. So you have to have two connections to the earthing arrangement or earthing system. Means all the yes. electric connections and devices involved in the earthing of a system and installation or equipment. So these two connections are actually to that part. Hope it's uh, it's clear now. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Amritlal. Yes. Now let me go to the next yeah. question. Very important question. Uh, Saliji, uh, we were uh, working together in the uh, BIS, in the NEC, and uh, during COVID also, we were restlessly working. And, uh, you know, we had uh, uh, our committee meeting. In addition, we were meeting and uh, uh, discussing several points. And one of the important points which we were always discussing was regulation number, uh, the earlier regulation number 12. Subregulation 2, which says uh, the NEC may be followed. And now, in the new regulation, the system is much more clear. So, what is your opinion on this? Yeah, so this is uh, actually a result of our persistent efforts we have been taking uh, for this change in a small word because shall be and maybe makes a lot of difference. Maybe gives option of the person who refers the regulation to whether to use it or not. And uh, shall be, it makes it mandatory. So whatever has been given in the regulations, it now says that the standards and codes are now mandatory. See the actually, uh, like you see when the bare law is there, it doesn't give you all the interpretations. On that bare law, a lot of books come out and they give the detailing. Like that, this is the bare regulation. And on that, if you want to, to uh, really interpret it and go into specific uh, system of working of material, then you must refer the standards and codes. Now this has become mandatory. And if you don't follow that, so that will be uh, actually in contradiction or a breach of regulation and that is punishable as we know. So this is a very good change that has come out and the implementation in accordance with that through the regulatory regulators, inspectorate wings is now becomes a very, very important part. So in accordance, if we see the uh, our forms one, two, and three. I think they still are not totally in line with the standard formats which are given in the, uh, if you can consider that <coughs> PPQQ RRSS forms which are given in the IS 732. So they slightly differ. So in accordance, I think we expect few changes in the formats given by form one, two, three, four also. Uh, see, there is one option in the regulations which allows the government, state governments, to make some deviations. But in respect of this regulation number 32 or 45 now, so in the uh, respect of regulation 32, it has been mentioned that we cannot make any deviation in the regulation 32. So in accordance, the form 1, 2, 3, 4 being part of that regulation 32, we cannot make any change. So there are a few limitations in accordance we should consider how to come out of that. Because as per my knowledge and as per my experience, I can tell you the same forms cannot be applied to all type of installations. There are some particular type of installations like high-rise buildings. We need to consider those from different angle. For hospital buildings, we need to consider from different angles. And in accordance, there should be some changes in the formats. So yeah. I think still we await to uh, make few change in the format, or at least allow the local governments to make the respect to yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But yeah. one one sub question. Now you hmm. see in the regulation number two, NEC and NBC are made mandatory, 
Yes. And if uh, where relevant Indian standards are not available, international standards shall be followed. And yes. if we look at the definition of international standard, so here, uh, for example, the international standard, oh, where is it? So I understand actually your point. It should be specific to IEC only. So yes, that's yes. There. Yeah. yeah, standard. You see this one, the standard. Standard means uh, Indian standard, and in the absence of Indian standard, International Electrotechnical Commission Standard mm -hmm. Institute of uh, now the regulation is allowing as a sequence. First is IS yes. standard, then IEC standard, then IEEE, then European mm -hmm. norms standard. Actually, I don't know what this European <laughs> norms standard. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So, so all these are allowed. But uh, do you think that uh, uh, in Europe somebody will allow uh, at the last of the sequence, uh, if nothing is available, follow Indian standard? Will they allow an European nation will allow Indian standard to follow? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, in we are allowing our electrical installations to follow European norms if yes. there is no Indian standard. Now, what will happen is. Manufacturers and the people with uh, business interest, they will try to interpret the wordings of the standard and they will they yes. can, they will claim, for example, this subject is explained only in the European standard. It is not in the Indian standard, IEC standard and the IEEE standard. Then they will try to claim that we have to follow European standard. Yes, yes. yes. So this is going to be a challenge. Now the question is, uh, first of all, we should understand that uh, almost all 100% subjects, uh, IS or 90% IS standards are there, 100% subjects, IEC standards are available. But uh, we can interpret that uh, a typical particular subject is not there in both the standards, so European norms can be followed. My question is, will an European nation allow an Indian standard to be followed in that nation, let's say Britain? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they will allow what is your opinion say on this allowing the the european uh, standards see, i think we should have limited our scope up to ic standards only so yes we should not be inclusion of ieee and all the standards because that may create a lot of confusion and there may be some controversies also somebody may ask to follow that will refer the standard at least they should have given a sequence also. If not in this, then this, then this, then this. That much clarity, if they can provide, yeah. I think that will reduce. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks for the answer. Now, uh, our question uh, is uh, regarding the Chartered Electrical Safety Engineer to Sri James Kuti, sir. Uh, James Kuti, sir, the question is uh, this uh, the Chartered Electrical Safety Engineer. Earlier it was Section 5A, and now it is Section 6 or, or Regulation Number 6. So all of us know that 2015, it has come out, but only few states are trying to make the CESP. Uh, any reasons, uh, can you tell why uh, the state governments are a little bit reluctant in uh, implementing this regulation or making CESCs available for people to make self-certification? Self uh, good morning, everybody. Actually, I'm surprised why the individual governments are not implementing this. It can be noticed that many states have conducted examinations for uh, appointing a chartered electrical safety engineer, but still not sure whether uh, they appointed them. Also, many states released notifications based upon the CEA guidelines uh, for CEC. Why the states and the central government not appointing CEC to handle the appropriate installations below the notified voltage as per regulations uh, 34 and 45. I understand that uh, many states are there pending to declare even the notified voltage. Another fact I understand that uh, many of the inspectors in service are reluctant to implement this, fearing they get lost their opportunities to inspect. Remember, you have no right to inspect any of the installations below notified voltage without the consent of the consumer. So, for a safe installation, please appoint CEC. Otherwise, actually, you are violating the regulation itself by which you may get penalized. 
That's okay, about sir, this okay. question, uh, Goma. Thank you. But uh, there is a sub question as well. See, for example, if you look at the formats uh, to be filled uh, in the schedule two, there are the formats, uh, you know, form one, form two, form okay. uh, one and two applicable for voltages up to 650 volt. Uh, let's say mm -hmm. our main topic is low voltage. So up to okay, 250 okay. volt form one and two, is it sufficient to ensure safety in a consumer premise? Let's say a larger uh, consumer premise such as a hospital, filling this form and making this test, is it sufficient? Actually, Sahaja sir already explained about this, uh, 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 about the forms one, two, and three. Uh, as per uh, this regulation, we have to follow or we have to inspect as per NEC 2023, IS 732, uh, 3043, etc. But uh, that forms one and two of Schedule 2 have limited entries. For example, nowhere the type of earthing configuration loop impedance, etc., are mentioned in these forms, which are having vital role with the safety of the insulation. So these forms are inadequate of, uh, in many respects. OK, thank you. Also, if we look at the list of the tools, actually, for some more information were there in the draft, which was, I think, removed. Also, the list of tools and the list of meters to be used by the Chartered Electrical Safety Engineer, that also uh, is inadequate. Now, anyway, it's uh, our continuous improvement. We have to work uh, further to improve it. Thanks yeah, for well, the answer. Uh, now, uh, yes, I, I just please, want Sally. to add a few words on this. See, regarding these forms, actually, I had given suggestion to add the name of Charter Lake Safety Engineer below that checklist. But now, if you see, just the consumer has to sign that uh, checklist. So, consumer is not a technical person who can fill the form and sign that. So there has to be compulsory sign of Charter Lake Safety Engineer below that uh, form. So that is missing, if you see. Yes, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to show that uh, in the screen. So this is uh, the form two, which is included. So you mean to say at the end of and, the- uh, At the end of this, this thing, all these things are technical, but how a common man can sign this? Supplier owner, how owner can sign this technical information? Okay, so ideally it should have been the chartered electrical safety. Ah, only there should be a counter sign of there should be a counter sign of the owner and sign should be of the chartered electrical safety engineer. So this suggestion we already have given. I had given this suggestion to CA, but I think that now it's not seen to be considered. And but if you uh, see here, even the even there is no uh, point of uh, earth fault loop impedance in form one. There it is mentioned in form two. And there is only question whether it is tested or not. So does it make it safe? <laughs> Anyone can say, yeah, it is tested. But what was the result? Yeah. Was it satisfactory or not? That doesn't answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, this, this, uh, the ideally, uh, somewhere if they could have made a, a note saying that the forms in uh, IS 732 can be added for larger installations. Then only the requirement as per for a for a larger no, installation he, he can be tested and found satisfactory. This this two words also they can add. Was it tested yeah. and found satisfactory? So yeah. But now you see, for example, this one where I am highlighting where the consumer's earth electrode is properly executed and has been tested. If yes, give value of earth resistance. Now, yes. for example, this one this is applicable only in case of a low voltage consumer premise. Imagine yes. the, the supply voltage is a high voltage and uh, it is converted to with a transformer, uh, the LV is used within the consumer premise. Mm -hmm. People may try to misinterpret it. They will still ask where is the earth electrode resistance value. Mm -hmm. This is actually to, to, to substantiate the regulation 18. Now coming mm -hmm. back to the regulation 18 and 19, I have a question to oppose her. Let me first show the regulations. Uh, earlier it was 14, 15, 16. Now it is uh, 14, sorry, 16, 17, 18, the, the, the DISCOM, the responsibility of the DISCOM. 16, switch gear on consumer premise, identification of earth the neutral and earth the earth the and earth the neutral conductor and the earth the terminal on consumer premise. Now, Apaus are uh, a serious question. Do you know any DISCOM in India who follows this regulation? Uh, very, very vital question. 
sir, uh, we have too many actually not only ultra questions as well as property laws in the guise of uh, uh, fire as well as equipment laws. Whenever there is a, a over voltage reflected from the suppliers network, that is discom network. Uh, actually, this regulation, especially the present regulation 18, uh, 16, 17, 18, 16, we will take it up later to say, 60 gear at the consumer premises. 17 uh, relates to the earth to the terminal, and 18 is the uh, specific regulation that I will deal with now. Uh, it has been uh, refined now. Actually, this regulation is our mostly sensory world regulation. It existed in 1937 before the codes and standards were in existence. Uh, subsequently, it was uh, reflected in 1956 and in, in the pre regulation 2010, uh, as well as the present regulation 2023, it, it has attempted to modify according to regulation 18, they have introduced the wording under sub-regulation one as per relevant standards. That's a welcoming trend. And, uh, uh, and the provision also they have introduced some specific uh, uh, classes, that is the last class. And the same shall be interlinked with the earth terminal mentioned in sub-regulation one through a suitable link. This is what we call the, the supplier's responsibility of providing a uh, a link that is earth neutral link at the consumer premises. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, for, especially for the 250, for the consumers uh, whose voltage doesn't exceed 250 volts. Uh, for the, uh, for, for the uh, consumers with higher voltage, they have to use their own nursing system. The two should be interconnected. This all tends to what this all is tending towards a common uh, uh, common wording that is MET. Uh, that MET is to be followed, then the, the air city terminal should be provided by the supplier. This is the norm. But unfortunately, when the consumer tries to connect his earthing terminal with the supplier's earthing terminal, all the problems will occur. The temporary overvoltage. These temporary overvoltage uh, shall definitely occur because the suppliers themselves are adopting various measures throughout this country. I can see within the same distribution circle of the same DISCOM, they adopt a TT system, they adopt a TNC, and TNC plus TT, so something is confusing. They don't know, the construction people don't know what is the responsibility of the DISCOM. It is a responsibility of the DISCOM as per regulation 43.2, just we can I refer that party three two also the slide for the uh, people uh, for the uh, audience. That is regulation forty three two says neutral conductor shall also be erected at one or more points along with the distribution system or service line in addition to any connection with the earth which shall be at the consumer's premises. This is totally absent. Uh, they also say that it should be as per standard. What standards say? as per IS 732 class 4.5.2.2.3. It actually fits the responsibility. The responsibility is with the supplier. Actually, these things are not known to the supplier as well as the consumer because the options are totally abiding by the standards, regulations. For the past over 100 years, I can say that as uh, misled, the consumers. What consumers can do? They just want to have their equipment safeguarded, have their life safeguarded. They they fear. I can say that none of the customers, at least 90% of the consumers are reluctant. They can't connect that external terminal with the supplies uh, terminal because they don't know what is the arrangement of the suppliers network, whether they have interconnection at the substation, whether they have provided TME, whether they have provided multiple neutral uh, earthing of neutral conductor. These are totally alien to the consumer. That's why the standard provides the responsibility with the supplier. Though we have to make aware of the supplier also in order to avoid any yes. hazard at the consumer. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, to simply to conclude, uh, none of the uh, most or not none, we really sometimes don't know. 
um, majority of the cases, uh, the earth determinal or the regulation 15, uh, sorry, for 16, 17, 18 of the current regulations, especially the earth determinal, which is there in regulation 18, which was earlier the regulation number uh, 16, it was not provided by the electricity supplier in most of the cases. Actually, I was in Kerala last week. So there, uh, mm. uh, the, the, the electricity supply company is giving a funny network. It looks like a TT, but on the, on the distribution, the neutral conductor is earthed. Whereas the earth terminal is uh, not available in the consumer premise because it, it looks like a TT at the consumer premise and at the distribution, it looks like a TNCS with the PME. Actually, we need to have uh, something, we have to do a research and we have to put uh, some new names for this kind of non-standard and, uh, you know, uh, 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 systems. I, I would say most of the, uh, the lot of accidents in consumer premise are due to this uh, non-standard methods of uh, uh, supply by the DISCOM. Uh, anyway, I don't know how we can take it up and protect the interest of the consumers. Now, coming back to the questions again, uh, I have a small question about uh, Regulation 37, which is talking about the, the uh, supply and use of electricity. Uh, my question is to Sashiraj, sir. The question yeah. is... Uh, uh, at the point of uh, commencement of supply, this uh, the table, second one, 11 kV and above, a circuit breaker by consumer. So yes. basically, if we read this uh, regulation, uh, it says uh, every consumer of 11 kV and above, they should have a, a circuit breaker, means uh, maybe an air, uh, BCB. But earlier, uh, switches were also allowed. Sir, what is your say on this, your opinion on this? Well, no, definitely... I think uh, it is going to add up to the costing factor uh, because 11 kV, we have very small installations, so which is commercial nature, and uh, they would uh, like to go, go into these uh, HD connections, and obviously it is 11 kV connections, and it would definitely add up to the costing. But uh, I don't know now, like... Um, the How they have gone into this, in what angle, they are look these factors into while well, uh, accommodating a circuit breaker by all 11 kV consumers. Earlier, as you rightly said, there was uh, a uh, distinction between voltage class and the connected load. And uh, load also was a criteria before fixing the requirement of a breaker. But they have done away with that. And uh, uh, your rather uh, doubt also or a question was, whether it is applicable to discoms. Well, uh, the regulation 37 has to be read uh, entirely from uh, 37 1 to 8, and then only it is applicable to most of the installation. Whereas, uh, very clearly, 37 2, which uh, very clearly states that it is at the point of commencement of supply, and it also says that it is to be provided by consumer. Obviously, it goes without telling that it is applicable only to consumers and regardless of uh, whatever uh, voltage, I mean, based on voltage only, the requirement of uh, primary protection is to be provided. Uh, obviously, this uh, 37.2 does not apply to discounts, uh, but it does apply to discounts when you come to 37.3, where it speaks of only a transformer, whether I mean, we have to read it very carefully. The transformer means a transformer provided by a consumer as well as by DISCOM. By default, it also goes uh, without telling that uh, the DISCOM stations are also included in 37.3. And uh, uh, here there is a specific uh, requirement on 37.3.2, where uh, for a supplier's installation, the secondary protection up to 1000 kV it is exempted with a breaker and uh, only beyond 1000 it is required. But uh, we hardly have uh, any distribution transformers in excess of uh, 1000 kV, at least in our state, so it hardly matters for them. But then uh, since we, we have had interactions with uh, SCOMs, the SCOM transformers uh, being in the in public place, there is the breakers provided are for that matter, the MCCBs provided on the secondary side also 
are terribly vulnerable for uh, theft. So they say that uh, a fuse is uh, something, even a fuse also is many a times in rural sectors is taken away and there is theft on that end also. So to that extent, they say that uh, you would want to protect, but with a fuse. So that is the understanding which has happened in Karnataka state. And uh, even uh, with respect to the primary um, GOS, which was already existing probably about 15 years back, all the primary GOS were initially, they were uh, sealed because they thought that 11 kV, there, there was a theft at the 11 kV end at the uh, point of commencement of, before the point of commencement of supply. So later on, by around 2000, they have done away with the GOS also on the primary side. So now that it is this 37 2 specifically talks about consumers. So it is universal that uh, as far as uh, discounts are concerned, the point of commencement of supply does not apply at all. The primary control does not apply. But uh, yeah. when we come to 37.3, it does apply and discounts, all stations of discounts are required to have uh, protection on the uh, primary side for uh, transformers above 1000 and uh, above. But uh, obviously the discounts are all uh, uh, half the stations and uh, only probably around 2005 in the state of Karnataka, we were not inspecting the stations of the discounts before uh, provision of the drawings. But now we have made it mandatory for all 66 kV or 33 kV and uh, uh, the, of course, the KPTCL uh, transmission companies with 110 and 220 and 400 to approve the drawings by the electrical inspectorate, similar to the consumer gets his uh, HT installation approved by us. They have to also get it approved, provide the breaker. Sir, sir I, would, I would like to interrupt. Inserted. I would like to interrupt. I would like to interrupt yeah, and please. ask one question. Now, the heading of yeah. the question is supply and use of electricity. Yes. So probably this part is applicable only to the consumer premise, where a discom is supplying and the consumer is using the electricity. Will it be like that? No. See, that's precisely what I was trying to tell. Thirty-seven speaks generally of all the installations when it comes to supply by the supplier to a consumer. And 37.2 specifically speaks of the, the consumer protection because it is at the point of commencement of supply. And that definition point of commencement of supply applies to only consumer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 37.2 refers exclusively for the consumer, but 37.3 does apply for the discounts as well. Discounts because as well. every transformer, they are required to provide which was not provided earlier because most of the uh, stations were without the breakers and uh, there was a lot of accidents and the this one uh, station interruptions were also there. So now we have made it very clear and very sure for them that they have to get the drawings approved and we will issue an approval for before charging and that is recorded. Similar to yeah. the end consumer as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Also, you told that uh, during... Uh, uh, also, you told that uh, the, the the discoms are telling that uh, if they put the circuit breaker, uh, it is stolen. So the circuit yes. breakers and even fuses are stolen. But then yeah. we have to ask a question back to them. How many of your engineers are properly closing the distribution board, which is on the roadside? They open it for a repair or a connection and they never uh, try to keep it in a closed and in a secured position. They keep it open and uh, if they if they keep their property open, of course, uh, people will steal it. So you can, they cannot escape with this uh, statement saying that uh, this, is accord, this is my, my yeah, interpretation. Then, yeah, I hope yeah, you when agree. In Karnataka, the KERC came in, uh, in the year 1999, 2000. They came with a bank. And to tell you, I was interacting with KERC and they said, if the numbers of electrical accidents does not reduce, they are going to be severely punishable, the ESCOMs. But then it never got implemented and it was only on paper. And they also made the electrical inspectorate to go around the city of Bangalore and elsewhere, most of the cities, the, the uh, mere mention of your boards and uh, even the street uh, switchboards being open, they wanted it to be cleared and to be made a drive 
and then we intimated all these all such uh, locations to the the supplier you know supplier got, has got i think uh, one into thousand times the stock got electrical inspectorate have got and they have a specific oem which is uh, meant only for this purpose and they are supposed to do it and they don't do it that is suppose uh, the order of the day and uh, they have the strong arm tactics because uh, they are in uh, uh, i mean close contact with the Uh, this yeah, one yeah. government Thank and you. day in Thank and you. out. Thank although the earlier act, nineteen ten, had defined that the electrical inspector is the advisor to government, it is never uh, been the fact in at least in Karnataka. The advice was now never taken from the electrical inspector. It was the other yes. way around. Thank you, sir. Thank so you, sir. Thanks for the shot. detailed. Thanks for the detailed answer, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Now Thank I have uh, I have to go to the next. Gopal uh, Kumar, just just a minute, Gopal Kumar. I think yeah, we yes, should read yes. this regulation with regulation number sixteen, where supplies required to put their own uh, circuit breaker at the point of supply. So this uh, regulation doesn't give any exemption from that regulation number sixteen. That is irrespective of the voltage level. You can just check the regulation number sixteen. Regulation number sixteen. Yeah. In belonging to the supplier, I think. Yeah, switch gear on consumer premise. The yes. supplier shall provide a suitable switch gear in each conductor, every service line. Yes. Yes, it is there. So it is not exempted. So supplier has to provide his own switch gear as well as consumer shall also provide his own own switch gear. So yeah, will it so be yes, doubled? One, but sir, one in sixteen, it is it is belonging to the supplier, and in yes. twenty is by the consumer. Yeah, sir. Uh, the interpretation can be the supplier has to provide uh, a switch gear. In addition, the consumer also have to put one yes, more switch yes. gear. So, so then it one becomes before, uh, double. One before point of supply and one one at the point of ah. supply. So, so that is a distinction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. So I would like to ask uh, one of the financial implication for smaller consumers. Let us say, look at the regulation number thirty-seven. Every consumer should provide. 11 kV and above, they have to provide a, a switch gear, which is shown in the sub-regulation number two. A question to Mr. Amritlal. Uh, Mr. Amritlal, imagine yeah, yeah. MSMEs of uh, let's say smaller transformer, 150 kV, 200 kV, uh, making a 11 kV circuit breaker to their installation. What is your opinion on that? This will be is it yeah, will be, an, yeah, will be yeah. an expensive job? Yeah, it is an expensive job. One more thing I have to add: the point of commencement. is not defined anywhere so that is going to create another problem between 372 and 3 and yes, coming back to your question uh this vcv indoor type vcv cost around 5 lakhs whereas ab switch with the hr6 use cost around 1.5 lakhs and if you suppose if you are putting up the breaker on pole that is outdoor type even then the cost difference is very big like uh, VCB with uh, will cost outdoor type will cost around something like two point two five lakhs, whereas a simple AB switch with the proper fuse will cost only some thirty thirty five thirty five thousand rupees. So uh, there is a definite issue in thirty seven two three uh, with regard to MSMEs and small entrepreneurs. So oh, thank you. Thank you. Why why I pointed out thirty seven two and three? The reason is whether we have to have a separate uh, uh, switch gear for the transformer, and at the point of commencement you need to have another VC. So I think there is a lack of clarity on that as well. Yeah, uh, I think there are some discoms. Those who say that. Uh, you know if i example i am saying i am applying for an a connection and the discom says sorry we don't have a circuit breaker you provide a you buy and uh, install a circuit breaker but it uh, comes to my account like you know you buy the meter and test it and uh, uh, put it into the circuit something like that so there can be uh, issues as well now i go back oh. to in fact in the state case. of karnataka in the state of karnataka the transformer the protective devices the cabling from uh, this one across the street everything is done by a consumer and it is after one year it is handed over back to the scom the 
buying portion is from uh, the consumer handing over portion uh, to escom after one year so uh, i in think between... in some states are immediately as soon as you install it uh, you you money is yours property is discoms no is here uh, they have gone one step higher that you have to maintain for one year if it conks out within one year you have to provide it again and to give it back only after one year that is to say when it is safe and it, it can be taken back to escom they take it back so that's okay, the thank you. Thanks for program. adding the answer, sir. Thanks for adding the answer further. So okay. now we have only limited time. We have 50 minutes passed. Thank you. Now, okay. uh, the next question is uh, to Saliji. Saliji, we know that the regulation uh, which we were discussing, regulation number 16, the DISCOM is not following. Uh, the consumers sometimes are not following the necessary safety measures. And finally, it is leading to 15,000 average uh, electrocutions uh, across India per year. And you know the gravity of fire accidents, fire from short circuit or fire from electricity, which is uh, happening uh, all over India. Sometimes the discoms are not following, uh, not sometimes, discoms are most of the time not following the regulation. Also, the consumer premises are becoming uh, unsafe. So the question to you is, uh, we are finding violations almost every day and everywhere. How uh, a common man can make a complaint and where a common man should make a complaint in case of these violations and how a common, can, uh, a common man can enforce that these, these regulations are not violated? Uh, you will say on that, uh, Saliji. Okay. Uh, I will call, like to call your attention at section 151 of Electricity Act 2003, that is regarding cognizance of offense. It says no court shall take cognizance of an offense punishable under this act, except upon a complaint in writing made by appropriate government or appropriate commission or any of their officers authorized by them or the chief electrical inspector or electrical inspector or licensee or generating companies. So common man has no reach to the court to ask for injustice on this um, violation. Only he can approach to the nearest electrical inspector or to the CGRF, Consumer Grievances Forum, and where he can make a complaint. So, so that is the limitation as per our law. OK, thank I'd you. I'd like to add uh, one point there. Uh, we had a, one case in Karnataka where we uh, uh, implemented this section 151. And then uh, we uh, booked the case against the ESCOM, the cable, uh, this Hathway cable people, and the city, uh, Bangalore City Corporation as well. And uh, very funnily, without our knowledge, the provision itself was removed from uh, Karnataka's. Uh, this one, jurisdiction of electrical inspector. 151 was removed without our knowledge. So that is how it works. So that, that was the first case we booked on uh, both the corporation and the uh, Hathway network and uh, ESCOM, all three put together for the death of a small child. And they removed so that uh, clause itself. This means uh, the accident is... Uh, uh, you know, no, the, the, no one is bothered the about the accident. Of, uh, yes, to a certain yeah. extent. So the case is because of a rule. Let us remove the rule. Accident rule, is uh, yes, immaterial. Yeah. The no, life of people remote. is not. I know the, the, the life of people is uh, not important. Uh, so, not important. <laughs> so the okay. I mean, what I was trying to tell is uh, the strong arm tactics to by the so-called people. They remove the rule itself. <laughs> okay. Sir, <it's> funny. <laughs> yeah, so the... one, just one point. Uh, raid one thirty six because of that one thirty six only this happened because diluting the regulation or act by giving a provision to government state government. I think such kind of uh, provisions shall not be applicable for uh, in places where safety matters. Am I correct? <laughs> This is what you are saying. So coming back to the again to the question uh, uh, regarding regulation number forty-seven, uh, the question is to oppose sir. Sir, in chapter six, uh, safety provisions for electrical installation and apparatus of voltage exceeding uh, six fifty volt, regulation number forty-seven, 
which is talking about uh, the interlocks and protection of use of electricity at voltage exceeding 650 volt. Here, the uh, the provisions for avoiding neutral circulating current has been made. Uh, this is also probably applicable, not also, this is also applicable for low voltage, but this is uh, this regulation has come under uh, the uh, heading uh, above exceeding 650 volt. What is your say on this? Your opinion on this? Uh, <clears throat> yes, yes. Uh, actually, the regulation title that is at voltage exceeding 650, it, it says interlock and protection. That's the title. But the voltage is exceeding 650. This gives a complete confusion to the uh, consumers as well as the inspectors. But they know that it is applicable for all. For example, you see the sub regulation 1, 3. That says when there is an interlock should be provided for uh, for uh, avoiding pack feeding, and another thing, uh, see regulation sub regulation two four, it insists earth fault relay for hundred kV DC set. Can we interpret these two things are applicable if the voltage is exceeding six fifty? Exceeding six fifty means eleven kV in our system at this minimum eleven kV. No six fifty existing now, so we we should not interpret it as a voltage exceeding 650 because it is applicable for 100 kV. There is no 100 kV DG set uh, at 11 kV, you see? And there is uh, interlock is necessary for avoiding uh, parallel, uh, for avoiding feedback. So we should interpret it out of common sense and science and technically we should not strictly abide by the uh, regulation. It, is a, it has become a compulsion. Uh, and another thing, these things are have arisen due to the removal of uh, voltage classification, HV, LV, MV, which were clearly available in the erstwhile electricity rules. Now that it has been received, uh, removed, and a complicated phraseology is employed, above 650, above 250, not exceeding those. These are all uh, quite unnecessary, you simply, uh, say that LV, MV, HV. Then the questioner is, who has to do it? Whether CE or C or C. As per Ultrastat 2003, it should be done by any of these two categories. Because people, we are all uh, hardly wired. Our brains are hardly wired with HV, LV, MV. So why do you remove those things and make these uh, phrases and make it uh, controversial to the science? So the thing is, we should not read the title as voltage exceeding 650. This occurs in several places because of this classification, because interlock, earthing, most of the things are common to all voltages. But by defining this 650, there should be some special category. If it exceeds 11 kV or 33 kV, it is an EHV installation, there are some uh, stringent measures. And it cannot be a, for all the, uh, uh, all the protection measures like parallel operation or interlock or something. That's what I feel. Uh, finally, we should avoid, the implementer should avoid the word at voltage exceeding 50. You remove it for the sake of- uh, or Probably uh, if this regulation is made uh, in the chapter three or where the general safety measures, where it is applicable for all the voltages, it would have been much better. That is what uh, is the conclusion. Am I yes. correct, sir? Yeah, so yeah, I think yes, I it, should be, it should be public, not voltage based. It yes, all makes the confusion. It should be common for all. Saliji, you have you told yes, so, uh, there was a similar mistake like this in respect of dry type transformer. It had come under the uh, conditions applicable for the transformers having oil over 2000 liters. So I pointed out that if you go along uh, according to this, then most of the distribution transfer will not be required as per this uh, dry type uh, regulation. So that regulation they removed from which was under 2000 liters and that now it's in put separately. Uh, so that the similar mistake is here. With no, I just pointed the sample question. Hello. Also, also, sir, uh, the, I just quoted the sample question. Hmm. In the draft, it was not 650 volt. It was actually 1000 volt AC and 1500 volt DC, which was actually in line with the uh, IEC standards or the IS standards. 1000 volt yes. AC, yes. 1000 volt AC 
thousand five hundred volt DC is low voltage. But the now uh, in the draft it was better. But in the final one uh, again the six fifty came into picture. Can anybody answer what is the basic behind this six fifty volt? And now imagine we have a solar rooftop PV system which is having uh, let's say eight hundred volt DC. In which category it will come under? <laughs> Yeah. And where is it written in the regulation? Can mm. anybody answer, sir? Sir, sir, actually this 650 volt was existing another, uh, I can say, almost 100 years back. During the stories, there was no standard distribution voltage, distribution uh, voltage at various levels. That is repeated and existing for the past 100 years, I, could, I can say. Now we are in 2023. From 1937, we can reach 2037 also. It's very sad state. Yes, uh, it's quite unfortunate that we still <laughs> follow 1937, uh, the voltage, uh, 650 volt. And, uh, uh, but in the draft, it was uh, much better, 1000 volt, but again, 650 came into picture. And we have to wait another 10 years to change or get a chance to change. Now, coming back Let to the... Let us celebrate 100th year. Let us yeah, celebrate 100th year for the change. <laughs> okay. So now coming back to the questions, uh, I have a question, a small question about regulation number 77, which is nothing but the, the lightning arrester. Let me scroll down to the regulation. So lightning protection, protection against a lightning. Uh, my question is to James Kuti, sir. So if we look at the first paragraph of the regulation, it is good. And the, the lightning arrester shall be, this is applicable for more than 650 volt. That means a HD surge arrester. As per the relevant standard, it has to be connected. Now in the para number two, which is highlighted without touching any metal part to separate vertical earth electrode or junction of the earth matter. Uh, practically what happens is, uh, I show you a, a, a picture from uh, a substation. This is a substation and uh, these wells with the pipe, you can see the, uh, I mean, this picture visible to you on the screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. These, these are like big cast and cast and earth electrode. I think each of them are probably uh, maybe seven, eight meters and there is a water pipe as well to put the water every day. You see here. And now each of these earth pit are connected to the outgoing feeder, 11 kV feeder of the substation and especially to the surge arrester. So surge arrester is at the top of this particular uh, uh, this uh, the, the, the line and uh, a separate conductor insulated with insulation. It is not touching anywhere. Separately, it is running and connecting to this particular earth electrode. The length of the earth lead in this particular case is approximately five to six meters. And this is the practice uh, which is uh, followed almost all over India. Uh, James Kuti, sir, what is your say on this? Will it work? Sir, uh, uh, here uh, you can see the change between the old and the new regulations is just the addition of the wording as uh, short as possible. You see in the second para, as short as possible. Yeah. Means the leads, leads from the surge arresters should be as short as possible to avoid the voltage drop or the induced voltage due to the added impedance through the extra length. Being a surge, the effect of a DL by DT will have influential role with the voltage. But uh, uh, by this, uh, actually the surge arrestor may not work for its rated surge voltage. That's a problem. Then the added bearing is very important means uh, the weight added, added is very important. But please go through the uh, other portions of this clause. It is same, just same as from the 2010 regulation. As you know, India, in India, we implemented the International Lightning Protection Standard IEC 62305 2010 from 2015 onwards. It means after 2010, means the year of the old standard. Still, we are keeping the same bearings with this regulation. Actually, it is making more confused. Whether the lightning protection earthing and the power system earthing can be interlinked. 
Yes, all of our standards such as NEC 2023, IS 782, IS 3043, and uh, IEEE standards, etc., are supporting this to avoid the potential difference between the two portions and, the, and thereby to avoid the damages due to step potential, etc. Now, in this revised uh, CEA safety regulations 2023, we are getting actually more confused regarding this regulation also. Uh, th this regulation is also uh, making conditions. At least the texts and the expressions should be properly placed to understand the purpose began instead of making more ambiguity uh, before just copying the old regulation. Of course, the electrical people beyond a profile can understand the purpose, but even a common layman, electrical layman should understand the regulation. So it is better to uh, revise it accordingly. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm just showing the picture uh, of what is written in the Indian standard. This is what is uh, from the Indian standard, especially this uh, lead length, which we call in a surge arrestor is very important. So the current regulation, uh, especially the paragraph number two is creating the confusion. Uh, people go for this kind of the connection L1, the first one. Here, it, the explanation is poor. So connection L1 is poor, the connection L3 or this, the picture number three is the best one. That means the lead length of the surge arrestor has to be as short as possible. Now, if you look at the earlier picture, which I have shown here in this picture, the lead length is uh, quite large. So technically speaking, uh, once when you have a longer lead length, the surge arrestor is, uh, uh, is of a showpiece. It looks, it is like a showpiece. It is never going to work because in the lead length, there will be more potential drop. As a result, the surge arrestor is not going to be effective, which is explained in the rules. Now, uh, the coming back to the regulation, I would say even if the paragraph number two and three is removed, the, the, the regulation would have been much better. What is your opinion on that, sir? If imagine a situation, the regulation, sub-regulation number two and the paragraph number three is just removed. Actually, simply mention uh, it should be done as per the standard. That's enough. Yes, I think for, for from here onwards, wherever I am highlighting, half of the regulation one, then the sub regulation number two, and the, the paragraph number three. If all these are removed, the, the situation yeah. would have been much better. Yes, yes, yes. Correct? Yes. Yeah, uh, but the problem is, in my view, why I took up this subject is. Uh, in BIS, we have the committee ETD 30. So I took up this subject uh, with the last committee meeting and then uh, we have made a subcommittee to make a study. And I was visiting a lot of substations uh, to make an analysis. Almost 99% of the installations, the lead length is much more and the surge arresters are of no use. Still surge arresters are failing, not due to lightning, but it is failing due to temporary overloads. And uh, we are in a situation that, uh, you know, nobody is bothered about uh, such situation. For example, in Maharashtra, there are transformer terminal mounted surge arresters as well. That means there are cases where uh, 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 this kind of connections are made. So the connection number three, there are cases in the 11 kV transformer, connection number three is also followed in Maharashtra, which is, I would say, very good. So now coming back to the questions, uh, my question is about regulation number 38, uh, which is uh, nothing but the regulation of uh, high-rise building. Uh, my question is to Saliji. Saliji, we were actively uh, participating in various uh, discussions. Now, this regulation, which is talking about the high-rise buildings, which is uh, provisions for now I think you can see in the in the in the, the one provision for supply and use of electricity in multi-storied building more than 15 meters in height, and now you see the sub-regulation number three. Actually, I tried reading it and uh, I am totally confused the, the meaning of it. Can you put some light on it? You have to unmute. You have to you have to unmute Saliji. Uh, yeah, actually, the heading of regulation number 30, there should be a change uh, that should be multi-story building and high-risk buildings. 
that should have been the proper wording because under this they mention that other buildings are also included so that is somewhat confusing um, like airports and hospitals where the height doesn't come into the picture every every place uh, regarding that uh, there are few additions in this regulation i would like to mention that one point where they mention there should be a switch for the building which should come to completely isolate the supply of the building that is interpreted wrongly because emergency services have always have to by, bypass to this switch. If you see the uh, IEC uh, 60364 part 556, they have given a sample diagram of this state. They call it a fire switch. In According to that switch, uh, if you see, they have bypassed all emergency services uh, before, uh, uh, before uh, placing this switch in the circuit. So it, uh, this uh, correction is very much needed because while the evacuation process is there, emergency services must run on and with the switch in off position that cannot be done. All emergency lighting, all your security services, door openings or, yeah, or um, smoke extraction systems, everything will fail. Uh, escape routes, lighting, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there should be connection for these emergency services. Another thing is that uh, if you see uh, regarding the fire retardant low smoke cables, I think they have mentioned the fire uh, uh, FRLS cable uh, for the high risk buildings, but I think there should be at least FRLS cable shall be used. That wording should have been there because HFFR cables are also there and use of HFFR cable, they are specifically mentioned for certain type of buildings. So it shouldn't be like that. One more part which should which could have been added in this that AFDD they could have added in this because in National Electrical Code we already have uh, given suggestion to um, make a provision of uh, AFDD so that is very much needed uh, in case of high rise buildings so few things I think still are required in this regulation which should actually uh, be necessary from the point of view of evacuation processes and all that. I would like to, so Gopa, yeah. Yeah, yes, so Gopa, I would like to supplement. Actually, the technicalities we do not uh, deal much because the NEC has been made mandatory. So the, this can be done. Actually, the, the actual problem is under sub relegation 3, all the 1 to 6 are deemed to be absorbed by the other buildings. We did not bother about representation one and two to apply for this. So we so AFDD or whatever you think you require, that can be implemented under the uh, NEC for various buildings like hospitals, everything building classification is there. So the main concern is implementation, not the technical things to be inferred and applied. The implementation comes into picture for the building which height exceeds 15 meters, there ends the matter. When they insert the provision of other buildings under sub 3, it means that if they, if these buildings can observe the following sub-sub-regulations 1 to 6, and that would suffice. Electrical inspector need not inspect. That is one part of interpretation. Another part, whether these buildings are to be inspected statutorily, that is absent totally. If, if these buildings, some clinics will be available in every state, some stadium, academic buildings, everything will be available. Who is going to inspect? What is the uh, mechanism available? What's the enforcing mechanism available in this country? So I presume that the sub relation three, other buildings are quite a complicated thing to be uh, to be exercised under any of the statutory provisions that are available now. That is my inference. Yes, that means other premises such as airports, hospital, hotels, place of entertainment, uh, irrespective of height. Yes. Sir, can I add uh, some point? Yes, please, sir. Sir, actually, this high-rise building means it is entirely a different category. As per NBC, uh, these are the buildings having uh, height more than 15 meter in NBC. But uh, in the same NBC, it is said that the height of the high-rise building is depending upon the local fire laws. For example, in, in Bombay, it is 32 meter. In Kerala, it is 16 meter. 
this regulation 38 is entirely different one which is belonging to the multi storied buildings having height more than 15 meter that is an entirely different category and not high rise building and as per regulation 38.1, the multi storied buildings having height more than 15 meter need electric inspector sanction but as per regulation uh, uh, 3 there are some other category of buildings which are not required uh, to get the permission from electric inspector that is what I understand. For example, place of worship. Suppose it is a church having height 30 meter. That is not, uh, uh, that will not come under electric inspector category. That is what I understand. So, sir, according to you, all high rise buildings, multi storied buildings, more than 15 meters uh, need uh, inspection except these airport, hospital, hotels, and other these places. See, so this uh, doesn't as need per it. regulation 38.3, the following protections or the uh, clauses should be applied for the buildings having height more than 15 meters plus the other buildings. As per regulation 38, the building having height more than 15 meters should get permission from electric inspector. Is it right? I, I think understand that way. Yeah, I think this regulation is from the perspective of uh, life safety of the person's uh, uh, in that building, whether it is a 15 meter height building or a hotel of less than 15 meter height building. So from that perspective, the height doesn't matter. Only the evacuation and the life safety of the person during the emergency. So that is the important thing. So we should consider this regulation from that perspective. So instead of, I think, mentioning just high, 15 meter height building, it should have been high risk building where the occupant load is more. I mean, the number of persons per square meter are beyond certain value, then the, all those buildings should be considered for um, high risk, as a high risk building. Okay, that means so, finally the question is whether these buildings, uh, irrespective of height, do they need inspection by the inspectorate or not? Yes, it should, yes. Need, it, should, it should need inspection. It should need inspection. Inspection is mandatory yeah. for there these is, buildings, irrespective no of height. If its no height is more than 15 meters. Sir, we are so this, height, this height is from the point of evacuation because num as the, the increase the number of stories, so evacuation process becomes very, very difficult. See, there is no lift except fire lift. No, uh, sir, sir, that is correct. That is correct. You see, we know the subject and we can interpret it in yeah. one way. Whereas uh, imagine a, a person who doesn't know much about uh, the evacuation or he is not thinking about uh, evacuation or other complications. How does a normal electrical engineer understand this regulation? The first question is, okay, more than 15 meters uh, multi-storied building, uh, in electrical inspectorates, uh, the inspection is required. Whereas for these buildings, such as airport, hospital and all, irrespective of height, whether it is uh, in a, a five meter height hospital, does it need uh, inspection or not? It should require. So that, is, that, that is the yeah. question. I, I, in my view, I would say this is not very clear, probably. Uh, no, no, has, okay. Sir, Mr. Gopa, I can say why they classify this building. The purpose of classification is describing the height limitation above 15 meters, direct, no problem. Below 15 meters, only these buildings will come. If there are any buildings like stadium or test lab, no test lab with a multi story building and industrial installation, these are, these are vague and uh, very many terms. Anything can be brought under this. Uh, several lakhs of buildings can be brought under this. Not only airport or stadium or public assembly. It involves some other installations also. Explosive, flammable. It's a generic thing, but unfortunately, the legal teeth is totally missing. You can't insist. Electric inspector can't go and inspect. Because he has been already interested with the building of 15 meter, more than 15 meters height. How they can take these under what category? Do these require uh, specific permission? No. Anybody can put a question. Any law people can put a question. It doesn't come under. But safety is a separate thing. When the regulation itself is not bothered about the safety, how can we jump into the field and enforce safety? That's a problem for the inspectors. They can't do these subclassification. Then surplus purpose of subclassification itself is to avoid inspection. That's my view. Actually, sir, in the draft, uh, in the draft, I still remember, in the draft, uh, it was written, these buildings, irrespective of height, 
Yes. There was a wording, yeah. and here the that wording, irrespective of height, is missing. That is the reason for all these confusions. Probably you just imagine, for example, uh, railway or metro stations, irrespective of building and other public building, it would have been much better. So draft was much better. Now this particular change. So we have a limited time. Let me go to the next question. The question is to James Kuti, sir. The question is about regulation number 39, especially sub-regulation number 3. You see this one. The, basically, uh, this uh, following this regulation, uh, uh, the, the distance, for example, what is your say on this? Actually, it especially is on the about... bare conductor on the back side of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is just a copy from the older regulation. I think it is okay that a 20 centimeter, I think somewhere it is there, 20 centimeter. If it is completely sealed and uh, uh, if the clearance is below 20 centimeter, I think no issue. Otherwise, it should be more than uh, 75 centimeter. I think it is okay uh, because for maintenance, uh, that panel should be uh, shifted from there for maintenance. Otherwise, uh, 75 centimeter is okay. I think it is okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, you carefully read the regulation 3B. There is a wording. If there are bare conductors, the question is bare conductors. In normal switchboards, <coughs> bare conductors requires attention, frequent uh, opening, their uh, rear opening. Overall doors will be available. People have to go and do some termination or maintain something. <coughs> In that condition, how can you restrict the entry less than 25 centimeter? That is not correct. The wearing, wear connection should not come into this area. Actually, there is some change from the, it may be some typographical error or some uh, uh, unintentional insertion. This is wrong. If there are any yes. bear connection, people will have to move to the back side. And they have to have more than 75 centimeters. If you receive the entry less than 20, it will be inviting down there. So you have to go through the previous regulation. Basically, sir, the, the bare conductor, it has to be removed, probably. I think, can, you, can you see, can you, there is a change. It appears there is a change from the previous uh, regulation. It is something uh, inserted, I think. Uh, unless I go through the previous regulation, I can't say that whether it is in insertion or not. Let me check up. If possible, you can also check Mr. Gopa from 2010. What's the relevant regulation? I think 37 is the relevant regulation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sir, okay, uh, one so, thing, oh, one yes, thing Gopa, I would like to add. See, in our uh, NEC part one, section 22, that speaks about electrical safety. We have given the R flash uh, distances, clearances restricted area, prohibited area, like that we have clarified what are the distances. And that is as per the R flash hazard as assessment. So this, whatever they have mentioned here, one meter or 20 centimeters, that, that doesn't correlate with the requirements we have given in the NEC uh, part one, section 22. So this, this uh, regulation should be reviewed from that point also. Yeah, yeah. So, so thanks for uh, all of you to answer these questions. Now, probably we can take up some of the questions uh, from the, uh, 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 the the question answers. But before that, I would like to add one small point. If we look at IA732, annexure A, which is talking about the... Uh, let me open that one moment, please. Anakshar A, provision for basic protection, various enclosure, or it is talking about uh, the uh, arms uh, reach. So basically this has come, I think, from the arms reach point of view for as a measure against basic protection, but the wording is not uh, correct. The bare conductor, this would have been much, uh, this would have been improved. Anyway, probably we can also talk about it uh, later. So I'm just uh, starting with some of the questions. We have a lot of questions in our Q&A and, &A and uh, uh, the members, those who wanted to ask question, you please put the questions in the Q&A. We will not be able to take up all the questions. So it start with uh, uh, Mr. Elaling. Uh, I wanted to see clarification regarding guidelines outlined in NEC 2023 and NBC 2016. Especially, I would like to 
understand the implications of uh, adhering only to the must guidelines while disregarding the recommended guideline can be can a building or installation be considered compliant with the code of practice if it only follows the mandatory guidelines and ignore the recommended ones so who can take up this answer probably sali ji the question is uh, the the uh, nec and nbc is made mandatory and there are something for which is also recommended so if the recommended is uh, uh, not followed will it be okay is the question you have to unmute yourself if we go as per the word the recommended thing we cannot make uh, cannot say it's mandatory so that is just the recommendation if, but if the electrical inspector gives an order that this seems uh, thing should be as per this then that becomes a mandatory so uh, that is actually discretion of electrical inspector if you see section 146 any order given by electrical inspector not followed then that becomes punishable so electrical inspector can order that recommendation uh, that he can convert it as a order and convert it as a mandatory part okay thank you thank and you and another thing another thing uh, which i have seen in the um, i mean local bodies who give the permission of the building for occupancy they just mention that uh, provisions should be as per national electric uh, national building code but if you see their formats of giving occupancy certificates and checklist i think electrical part is almost negligible in any of their uh, format so there are few uh, points regarding the transformer substation but regarding internal wiring electrical insulation no points are included so nbc is not so far was not mandatory now it is good thing that they, it has been brought into this um, uh, regulatory part of electrical regulations also yeah actually this is a big uh, relief for me because you know the non standard lightning protection nbc has uh, uh, asked not to use uh, ese lightning rods and now since nbc is made uh, mandatory uh, now early streamer emission devices uh, legally is not valid in india which is a good move let me say now there are some questions regarding uh, some technical uh, questions which are not related to the regulation so i don't i skip these questions and there is a question from mr arvind deshmukh regulation 80 shall be discussed for ptcc approval from 11 kv so let me show the regulation 80 uh, i think this power the technical committee telecom and uh, yeah so. telecom and this uh, committee let me uh, show you the regulation number Eighty. Yes. So, regulation number eighty is protection against electromagnetic interference. The owner or the of of every electric supply line of voltage eleven kV and above shall obtain clearance of Power Telecommunication Coordination Committee to ensure the safety of personal and telecommunication line. as per the requirement of section 160 of the act can anybody answer on this see this is requirement as per telegraph act uh, that section is from that only i think but uh, such uh, such clearances are never taken i haven't seen such clearances are taken so i have attended few of the meetings of this ptcc but most of the thing just remain on paper so that's not being followed okay but the, here it is talking about protection against electromagnetic interference emi it is not talking about yes. personal yes. safety it's only talking about emi yes yes, yes. so okay. i think uh, there is there is so that is regulations also the means uh, suppose there is an electric line and telecommunication line uh, the second coming line authority should get the permission from the first authority yes the new line coming in vicinity of telecommunication yeah. line so clearance has to be taken but see there are no overhead lines nowadays so that question doesn't arise there most of the lines are underground now and in respect of underground lines in our regulation i think number 70 or something they have given the what should be the clearance between uh, telecom cable and the power cable 
So I think Actually, it is the question is, uh, yeah. the question is uh, regulation 80 uh, is it applicable from 11 kV onwards? Yes, I, the answer is very clear because the regulation says 11 kV and above. So this clearance is required for 11 kV and above. Yes, right. So 11 kV is included. Yes. So that, yes. that is right. So uh, 33 kV, uh, 33 kV t, the distance is now is 30 centimeters and uh, about 66 kV or so uh, the distance is uh, 60 centimeters. That is mentioned in regulation. Yeah. Uh, sir, I would like to supplement. I attended several telecom PTCC coordination meeting some years back, 10 years back. Now these things are not coming. I don't know because of uh, uh, absence of uh, almost uh, over a telecommunication line. There are there is a stringent measure that whenever a parallel feeder, say 110 kV power line feeder trips or uh, something happens, there will be induction in the telecommunication line. That's the purpose. That is electromagnetic interference, not interference. Any people who work in a dead line parallel to any EHV communication, EHV line can suffer damage due to induction from that line. That's why parallelism should be avoided in general. The, 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 the regulation should be observed, whether the lines are existing or not. If anything comes into picture, then it should be observed. How can we totally avoid that particular regulation? It's actually arising from the act itself. The regulation should be observed. It is my opinion. Yeah, yeah, thank there you. Can thank be some, you. There can be some in future like, or something existing. We yeah, can't rule so there, is a, there is an interesting question, which is a straight uh, directly related from Mr. Prince Singh. Is this a regulation applicable to older buildings and factories? Or is it applicable for new installations only? Is it uh, retrospective? Uh, sir, uh, Shishiraj, sir, what is your opinion on this? Yeah, it will be retrospective only, so not to the existing ones. Okay, so that means whatever going to come in the future, uh, this is yes, applicable. Yes. So not for no. the old buildings. Not for the old ones. Okay, thank you. So somebody again asked the regulation 80 shall be discussed. Uh, yes, we already discussed it. Uh, uh, a lot of questions still about earthing. Somebody asking, uh, you know, earth a bit insulated. Uh, so these questions, we are uh, sorry that we cannot take up the question. Today's discussion is more about the uh, regulations. So again, one question in case of neutral earthing of genset and transformer, what shall be the minimum two earth electrode is insulated? Okay, these are technical questions, not related. Uh, gentlemen, Mr. Bera, uh, uh, please note that the regulation is talking the generator and transformer terminals as well as body to be connected to a common bus bar to separate connections. That is the requirement. So, but whereas your question you were asking about earth electrodes and all, which is not applicable. Uh, then... Uh, Actually, there are several questions, but uh, there is no question uh, really related to the regulation. Somebody is asking a requirement to prevent the fire for solar installations. Have anybody saw a requirement included in the regulation about the fire in solar PV? I think there is a separate regulation, chapter 10 in regulation yep. talks about solar. And uh, in uh, connection with that, you refer NEC Part A, which talks about uh, rapid shutdown and uh, fire protection. Yeah, actually, Chapter 10 talks about uh, the safety requirements for uh, renewable energy stations uh, from Regulation uh, 119 onwards. Uh, so it talks about renewable energy stations, then safety for solar PV. Uh, this is regulation number 121. So it talks uh, generally, there is nothing about fire in this particular case specifically. You have to refer the, uh, yes, the relevant standards. To, yeah, it is, it is there, I think, uh, on page number 144, uh, 121.4. 124, 121.4, I think. 
there and is a uh, yeah yes there is a sub regulation uh, yes, the yes. 121 sub regulation number 4 it says Four. a requirement to prevent fire from solar installation a fire detection system and automatic fire suppression system shall comply with the relevant standards okay the fire detection and suppression systems are specified but you see if we look at the nec the requirement at the dc side uh, the dc arcing is highly dangerous and it can uh, create uh, you know continuous fire which will spoil the whole installation the whole building in, if it is a rooftop for uh, avoiding dc arcing especially on the solar pv uh, double insulation is made mandatory or you cannot compromise double insulation but most of our uh, solar pv installations especially inside the combiner box double insulation measures are compromised that is the reason most of the fire in uh, solar pv are in the combiner box because double insulation is missing also sometimes people use uh, normal wires with single insulation for this application these are actually violation so the first is you should comply to the standards as well not only providing the fire detection and suppression system so i am actually reading uh, questions uh, one by one but lot of questions reg again regarding air thing i don't know when our nation is going to be free from these air thing questions and free from this chemical air <laughs> so uh, probably i request the panelists to you also please uh, go through the questions there are so many questions and uh, uh, okay somebody is asking uh, regarding lightning arrester can you explain once again please mr gopinath mr gopinath if you use any surge arrester let it be low voltage or high voltage the length of the connecting wire has to be as short as possible because the idea of the surge arrester is to limit the transient over voltage which is going into your equipment let's say for example a transformer if the length of the lead the connecting lead is more there is voltage drop on the lead length which will induce more voltage the impulse or the clamping voltage will be higher so in order to have the best effect of lightning arrester you have to use the shortest wire length for a 11 kv or 9 kv surge arrester probably 1 or 2 meters is okay but if you connect the surge arrester earth lead imagine the length is 5 meters approximately 50 kv will be dropped on the wire length itself the protection level of the surge arrester plus the wire length will be much more than the impulse withstand voltage of this transformer so surge arrester becomes ineffective that is what it is so again mr dilip uh, has asked the question as per new regulation now the hospitals which are not of height more than 15 meters need to take approval from uh, electrical inspector by submitting the drawings i think it is not a question it's a statement from mr dilip uh, according to mr dilip uh, uh, hospitals uh, even if the height is not uh, 15 meters they need uh, an approval from the electrical inspector that uh, that sub regulation uh, probably is with regard to congregation of people because that sub regulation if you see all the installations covered in that is uh, with relation to congregation of people like stadium hospital or uh, uh, airport or uh, railway and such installation so there's specific uh, i think the earlier uh, act also had uh, specific requirement under section 54 where there are congregation of people that uh, you have to have uh, electrical inspectors uh, approval so the same is replicated here um, i feel yes sir this uh, there is another question uh, the safety regulation is silent on the following points whether whether the oil transformer has an oil capacity below 2000 liters can be provided in the second basement of the building residential yes. or commercial industrial or on the roof of the building no yes. it is not allowed it is covered actually no actually we can refer the uh, uh, technical standards for uh, plants and um, uh, there is given regulation i think 2021 the regulations come out 
So oil type transom is not allowed anywhere other than ground and first basement. Dry type transomers, of course, there is yeah, no such. Yeah. So I, I, I will. Uh, So I will, uh, there are few people, those who have raised the hand, I am allowing some of the, uh, uh, the, the participants. Uh, if you wanted to speak, please unmute yourself and you can have uh, your questions directly. Actually, I allowed a few people, but uh, I can't find their names anymore. Mr. Neelesh, Mr. Naresh, you can talk. Also, Mr. Mohan Kulkarni, Mr. Suresh Kannan, Mr. Jay Jodi Dar, your hand is raised, so we presume that you wanted to talk. Mr. Govinathan, Mr. Pera, if you wanted to talk, please. Uh... Hello? Sir, uh... yeah, I'm Gopinath. Yes, Mr. Govindan, please. Yeah, my voice, I hope my voice is audible. Uh, regarding yeah, yeah. that yeah. earlier we have discussed, sir, can you share the picture once again, sir? What you shared, that uh, LA picture. The Sarja Raster? Yes. Ah, okay, I will, I will put it in the chat box. Okay. Very soon. Quickly, I will put it in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So, sir, uh, yes, Mr. Is... Dara. This is Joy Thor from uh, Haldia Petrochemicals. I have a question is, see, uh, this, uh, we have the engineers and diploma engineers. Now, uh, as per regulations, do they require to have separate license again from licensing board, electrical license? Yeah, it is required. For all engineers and uh, diploma engineers. I uh, think have, you have to designate them for the purpose of, uh, for the duties which you are assigning to them. So designation should be given against the, they are, they are the, uh, the regulation requests that when in they are uh, I mean appointed by consumers, it is a requirement by the state act uh, on licensing that they have to have the licenses or permits issued by the state. It is applicable in Karnataka. Yes, they have to immaterial of their qualification, they have to have the permits and licenses. So basically, they have to get the license from Karnataka if, if yes. this is the, the, the facility in Karnataka. What about Maharashtra, Saliji? I think if the person is designated for the particular task of work and if his name is given in that list, which has, he has to keep the record and electrical inspector and go and check and even reject his name if he's not capable of doing that duty. So that, that supervisor license or such things are not required. Okay, that means only a person who is having the supervisory license can be listed in this particular uh, task. No, not necessarily. He should he, he need not have any supervisory license. Only the company should designate him for the particular task of work. No, so this is basically dependent on the state. Well, sir, Actually, the yeah. interpretation, interpretation may differ. Mr. Apau may put some light on this. I think Mr. Apau is no more. Uh, sir, the, uh, are we talking yeah. about uh, uh, regulation uh, three? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 sir, Apau, sir, can you hear? Uh, yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, Am I audible? Actually, regulation. Uh, sorry, regulation. Um, uh, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, you're audible, please. I'm audible. Yes. Uh, the, the question raised was whether the designated, the listed person, uh, yeah, all the diploma or daily orders can be listed to undertake the safety clearance, safety work within the premises. It's a must. As per Regulation 3, uh, only the persons are notified by the state licensing board. That is the government. Government has sent up the state licensing board to uh, do the work by the uh, competent certificate holders. So irrespective of uh, the, the qualification, they have to, whether they are diploma or degree, they have to be conversant with the nature of work, with the safety work. They, they, can, they can be extended somewhere else, not in the safety protocols, safety 
corporation and uh, i am uh, having the oil and gas uh, sector uh, that is uh, my uh, major question is the uh, related to the arthing arthing is the lifeline for the bottling plant lpg bottling plant and the storage units and uh, only thing i want to know that uh, uh, what would be the minimum distance between the two electrodes but some uh, at some places it is 1 meter and some places uh, uh, no, the question is, is uh, understood may i answer the question is understood yeah. may i answer now for your petroleum Hello. installation uh, are you yeah. following the oisd standard oil industry safety directorate standards not able to hear are you Hello. following are you following oisd standards yes yes we are following the absolutely following the oisd standards as well as no, no, let me answer related. sir let, let me answer your question is very well understood yeah. the in most of the oil industry uh, uh, installation the oisd standards are used and your question is regarding the air thing i am so sorry to make a comment here whatever written in some of the oisd standards are really big foolishness sorry to use the word foolishness in the sense if you wanted to see i can show you the uh, the regulations as well they not the regulation the the oisd standards it says electronic equipment need a separate earthing of 1 ohm lightning protection separate earthing of 7 ohm transformer neutral need a separate earthing of 2 ohm i don't know from where such foolish ideas came into a very very important uh, a uh, rule which is followed in all over india in the oil and gas sector we have written so many letters to this authority telling them that uh, this is wrong and uh, in the specification of oisd oisd standard they have also written that all these are as per is3043 it is absolutely wrong is3043 never written to make separate 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 now your oisd standard has written it and all over india your petroleum installations your gas storage installations are following this in this this uh, uh, unsafe procedure and this is the reason for failure i am so sorry to make this comment sir hope the answer is clear what you are following is absolutely wrong it is technically wrong let me ask let me or let us go to the next uh, questions uh, mr Mo mohan kulkarni if you wanted to speak uh, you can uh, uh, do it so i don't know my harsh sir. answer uh, would have been you know it was too harsh uh, probably hemant sali ji you are looking serious <laughs> any <laughs> comment on it you are also a member of is3 etd20 no. is3043 sir sir may i yes please uh, sir regarding that uh, specifically diploma holders that uh, uh, shashi raj ji has uh, told only electrical diploma holders are allowed or any diploma holder who have taken npti or uh, pet certification who is allowed to work as authorized it is only, only electrical. electrical and electronics uh, in diploma holders only in the state of karnataka earlier we had uh, even the mechanical ones which was removed 
in between uh, 2013 and uh, 2018 and now electronics has been added so it is only electrical and electronics and nobody else okay thank you thank you sir so dr bhavani uh, yes sir can unmute yourself yes sir yes sir hello sir uh, i am in wind industry and uh, here uh, uh, if we see the for the this wind farm generation is 690 volt and for that a simple usa unitized substation is there uh, what happens uh, around 15 wtg are connected a single line okay sir so la uh, normally as per cig regulation la is installed on the dp means the top of the dp structure but uh, when any la fails then whole 15 wtg trip total feeder trip so to avoid this one LA is put below the isolator, means after isolator for the individual W2G. Means ultimately, this, this LA is for a transformer protection basically, 2.3 MBA or uh, 3 MBA transformer is there. So here, uh, this is made for the operation point of view. For operation point of view, we can once an LA uh, trip, um, LA blast in any WTG that is isolated through the isolator, but another WTG can be run, means uh, uh, say 14 WTG can run to avoid the generation loss. So this is uh, right or wrong as per uh, protection of the system, lightning protection. Uh, I, I think the, I think I think it is acceptable. It is acceptable. So there, is, there is no issue. I think the, the issue is whenever there is a surge arrestor failure, the surge arrestor failure is creating, uh, due to the surge arrestor failure, the feeder is tripping. That is the issue. Am I uh, correct, is it? Uh, feeder uh, is uh, tripping, uh, yes. Feeder is tripping uh, and all 15 WTG say 30 megawatt is uh, black out. So to avoid that, means uh, early restoration. When, uh, if, for example, if uh, one WTG, uh, one USS is identified, or LA uh, failure, so replacement will take time. So simply uh, isolate the uh, isolate that particular location, or another can be put in generation. That is a lot. Sir, 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 the, the easy way is, uh, sir, uh, the easy way is, you please go to IS one five zero eight six, IS one five zero eight six part five. This is a standard which is uh, which is made during 2020. It is from IEC 60099 part 5. This is talking about selection and application recommendations of surge arrestor. Uh, the necessary protective measures of avoiding the, the, the tripping of the, the feeder is included there. Please refer the standard. That is the easy way. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Gopa, sir, you rightly told the standards C099, IEC standard C099 part 5. In most of the locations, what we practically find is the wrong selection of lightning arrestors. In regulation itself also, it is told that you provide a, a 9 kV lightning. It's not correct. Sometimes it all depends on various factors, the effectiveness of air thing, whether it is solid neutral or uh, energy air thing. So many things comes into picture. The temporary over voltage if ultimately decides the selection of lightning arrestor. At times, you will have to employ a lightning arrestor more than your system voltage, not 9 kV. It, you may require a 12 kV lightning arrestor also for a 11 kV distribution. So this is the thing. Unless you analyze those selection procedures, you can't have a light, right matching. The Another thing, the, the, the actual erection, the erection as Mr. Gopa as well as Mr. Uh, James Putty told the, the lead length and the closeness so that the purpose of lightning arrestor is to safeguard the equipment which is designed for a certain BIL. And if you were residual voltage and if your lightning arrestor suffer a residual voltage more than its rating, say for example, a 75 kV BIL transformer can't withstand a voltage of above 100. Similarly, your lightning arrest also will have to drain the HSU lightning surge, divert the surge. It's only a surge diversion. You should provide a supply continuity as well as the uh, protection of your transformer. There should be a right balance by right selection according to IEC 6099.5. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks for the detailed answer. Uh, uh, sir, sir Joyadhar, I have another question. For this lightning arresters, uh, suppose in a, a structure, we have six lightning arresters. Now, this is lightning arresters are going to the six earth pit, lightning earth pit. And all these earth pits are, are uh, connected together through an earth grid. Now, they separate earthing grid also for the electrical earthing. Now, can the electrical earthing and this lightning earthing grid uh, be connected together? Means uh, on the same uh, earth, uh, earth grid, that means I connect my lightning earth pit as well as the electrical earth pit. Or I have to prepare two separate earth grids and then bond them together. Sir, sir to make it simple, please you have can't a, separate please any earth grid. Please have a look at the separate the screen. This is from the IS standard. In fact, in the heading you are seeing IEC, but this is the IS standard which I have just referred. There are three ways of connecting: connection one, two, and three. Connection one is a poor connection because you see the length L3 between the zinc oxide. Uh, let me zoom it again. Between the lightning LMO, zinc oxide, that is the surge arrester, and T is the transformer, there is a large loop standing with L2, L3, L5, L4. There is a large loop due to this wire length or due to the, uh, the length of this, uh, the, the loop. Your surge arrester is not efficient in this case. That means if you are connecting your surge arrester through a separate insulated uh, conductor or a bare conductor insulated from the uh, from the, uh, the the metallic parts of your installation, and if you are connecting it to a separate earth electrode, technically your surge arrester or the lightning arrester, whatever the name we call it will not protect your transformer. Now the connection number one, for an extra high voltage, let's say 66 kV, 132 kV, 220 kV, it may work because the length, lead length is only 5 meters, 6 meters. But this and the withstanding voltage of the transformer of that voltage is very high. Whereas for 11 kV or 22 kV transformer, the impulse withstanding voltages are quite less. It's not in hundreds of kVs, it is much less. Let's say 11 kV transformer, it's about 75 kV. So five meter wire length itself is a problem. Now in that particular case, you go for the connection number two or three, the surge arrestor lead earth wire has to be connected to the transformer tank itself. In this case, connection number two or three, you get the best possible protection from or by using the surge arrestor. Connection number one is okay for extra high voltage, but not for 11 kV or 22 kV or 33 kV distribution class. So I hope the answer is, uh, or we hope the answer is clear. Please uh, refer the standard. Very clear explanations are given. Thank you, sir. So, any other questions? We have made some more people. Uh... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, myself, Smuti from Odisha. Yes, please. No. Sir, actually, for the charter safety engineers, they are not allowing the BISCOM engineers. Sir, can we be allowed or not for charter safety engineers? Uh, I don't know who can answer this question. Saliji, you are on mute. It is already defined by Central City Authority. They, uh, they have uh, prepared on guideline. As per that guideline, I think disco engineers are not, uh, not adequate. Sir, sorry, sir, you please. Sir, you have to unmute. Yeah, I think I think the state can allow uh, the uh, disco engineers uh, to, to act as a charter safety engineers. That is within the scope of state. So state to state, the rules may differ. In yes. our state, I think five years. Uh, I think minimum five years is uh, required. Then, then only they are supposed to come into any electrical field. Yeah, uh, but Open. regarding this supply engineers, what will happen? In checking their own installation and certifying that will not be correct. I think it should be cross certified. The person who carries out the work should not certify himself as a chartered engineer. Somebody else should certify it. That's precisely why electrical inspector came into the picture. 
<laughs> no, see, we have to reduce the inspector Raj. Na. The, everything I is know. that That's end. Sir, yes. Yes. Sir, so is it, a, sir, is it a disc, uh, uh, retired, retired engineers or uh, in service engineers? Retired. Retired. Okay. Uh, I think Mr. Smudhi... In service brother, cannot uh, come at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Mr. Pradhan's question is whether a working engineer from the uh, from the DISCOM, can he be uh, uh, no. captured a safety engineer uh, oh, no. additionally? The, the, their, uh, this one, rules does not uh, provide for them to work anywhere else. Or guidelines? Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Guidelines do not allow the person to work somewhere, anywhere else, uh, engage in any government or semi-government um, exactly. as employees. So that is the, the reason. Standing group. Yes, yes. Okay. So I think uh, yes, we have passed almost two hours and it went so fast. <laughs> So, I, actually, before making a, a vote of thanks, I would like to say sorry to all of you. I was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, regarding the question from the oil industry. Uh, actually, my problem is uh, in the oil industry that uh, standard, it is written, uh, the mistakes are written, and uh, at the bottom, it is written as uh, all these mistakes are made as per IS 3043. As a committee member of uh, ETD20 and responsible for making IS3043, I would say, if OISD standard removes as per IS3043, I have no problem. So it is up to them whether to change or improve their standard. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, us or with uh, the committee members of ETD20. But if you make a wrong uh, uh, you know, a re a requirement in your standard and uh, ask it as per IS3043, then uh, it is, uh, it is uh, you know, our quality of work itself is uh, getting affected. That is why I was a little bit angry. I'm so sorry for that. So thanks uh, to uh, all the participants uh, as well as the panelists. Uh, Shashiraj, sir, thank you very much for participating and patiently answering the questions. Uh, Heman Saliji, uh, also James Kutiji, Amritilal, uh, also uh, Apau sir. Apau sir is uh, traveling and he is in his native. I think he joined through his phone. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks to all of you for uh, patiently answering the question. Probably we can also have one more session uh, in the same subject, uh, maybe after uh, uh, two or three weeks. So if all of you agree and if we can uh, make a common date, we can have one more session. So with this, uh, uh, probably we can end up the session. Uh, if you have any points, the panelists are invited to make a comments uh, uh, for for if you have any comments. Shashiraj sir, any Shashiraj sir, any comments? Uh, well, right now I don't think so because uh, as I told you, it is uh, I mean the way uh, guidelines have come very recently, and we need to. Uh, interact with uh, each provision and see how it fits into the present circumstances. Uh, so I think it will take little time for us to again uh, look into the practical aspect of uh, application of these uh, uh, regulations and then we can probably come up with a better view on this. So Saliji. Yeah. I think, I think we should appreciate the efforts taken by CA. Really, there are some good changes which we have been expecting, but still we have to travel a bit more. And for that, I think the regular revision, revision session should be uh, taken. And you, as per these reviews, some amendments if required that should be considered. Uh, thank you, thank you. Sir, James, could you say? Sir, uh, regarding that oil and explosive regulations, Peso is having main role. So you, Gogomar, you please have contact with the Peso engineers. They need adequate training in lightning protection and electrical safety. It is a must. Sir, actually, uh, regarding this one, that uh, OISD, I have I am following up with them for almost now five, six years. I have written several letters. Nobody is bothered. Then uh, recently, about three months back, uh, I sent uh, an email which was a little bit harsh. So then after uh, making a harsh uh, comment on the email, then suddenly everybody woke up and they started replying saying we are going to uh, uh, this particular email. 
Uh, anyway, if they are changing or not changing is none of my business. If they remove as per IS 3043, my job is done. Because they make a mistake and how do how can they make put their mistake into our shoulder? I hope you understood. So anyway, we will we will put our effort and we will see that we will be uh, changing it. Uh, finally, to oppose sir, any comments, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, see, we have dealt with a lot of the enforcement uh, provisions implementation. This is not sufficient. Actually, see, uh, regulations have come out with uh, a more uh, pessimistic, uh, optimistic uh, way. We have to improve because improvement is a never-ending process. We are having still, after so many uh, programs conducted by our group, that is NFE, we have been facing such basic questions from the same members who attended the meeting. So in my opinion, improvement is a never ending process. It should be done, but unfortunately we are going it in a very low pace. Let us uh, all rise to the occasion and make ourselves competent, confident to provide the safety measures to the people at large. Thank you, that's all what my message to the people. Thank you for the opportunity. Also, uh, Mr. Amritlal, you were uh, raising the hand. Any questions? No, no, just uh, one point. Uh, see, we uh, we are on the world stage, like India is on the world stage. And uh, when we put up some regulations, we, the wordings are, are also very important. Uh, I find a lot of places where gender neutrality is not observed. Okay, so that is a very small point, but uh, very, I think very important. Yeah, uh, I'm showing the screen of uh, the uh, CEA. You can download the regulation from this uh, particular website, which is uh, CEA. Also, I would like to show the our organization, NFE, National Federation of Engineers for Electrical Safety. We are uh, a, a newborn society, not for profit organization. Uh, the members are, uh, uh, there are about 500 members uh, in last uh, three months. We started our activity in uh, uh, 10th of March, uh, 2023. The mission uh, is to make uh, every electrical installation free from uh, accidents. So we are taking a lot of efforts uh, to make awareness. We request uh, the participants, if you are interested, please uh, join our association and uh, put your uh, uh, your efforts so that we can make uh, 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 a nation free of electrical accidents. There are different kind of membership facilities available. Uh, individual member, the annual fee is about 1,000 rupees and registration fee is 500 rupees. Uh, so uh, we are making a lot of classes and you can participate in all of our classes at free of cost. Uh, not all the uh, training courses. There are some training courses which is uh, where we have to pay uh, for the venue as well as for the trainer, except those cases, it's uh, uh, free. So with this, uh, uh, we would like to stop the program. Uh, I hope there is no question. We will come back to you by uh, the next mm -hmm. report. Uh, the same question or the new questions can be taken up. And if you have any further questions, you please mail us. You can go to the uh, NFE website, you can mail us so that your questions can be addressed in the next session. So thank you very much and thanks to all the participants as well as the panel members to patiently sit with us for more than two hours and uh, actively participating in this discussion. We have a lot of uh, participants raised their hands as well as there are several questions. We are so sorry that uh, due to the time limitation, we are unable to answer all your questions, but we will definitely take it up uh, further and we will answer your questions sir. so thanks to all of you thank you very much thank you thank you uh, miss lakshmi you can...